see team dropped him off. He's got some skill as well into the mid game due to the ags change, which makes a difference. So um, I think the main thing that LGD is going to have to worry about here is the counter push. With the Chen pick, I mean, you could kind of see it in Secret due to the fact that they pick Shadow Shaman, but Secret has pretty decent push now, and they have a hero that can definitely siege in Doom. Pop Scorched Earth, it's going to heal you up, grab some armor items, maybe a mech, maybe a Shiva's Guard, and all of a sudden LGD's already kind of weak damage becomes really weak, and right. the only way he's going to die is if he gets pulled all the way back, and even Secret kind of has a solution to that. If Puppy's fast enough, send him back to the fountain, and all of a sudden LGD's kind of screwed, so I, I also favor the Secret draft. All right, well, we're starting things off here in game number two. Of course, Team Secret, one game up after a 65-minute bloodbath between these two teams. We're now seeing whether or not game two, LGD, can draw this to a third game. Team Secret going to be starting off on the top side of things. Looks like they're going to be heading for the top bounty rune, most likely. Puppy just kind of showing himself, perhaps forcing LGD to think there's going to be some sort of aggressive maneuver, but it's just a feint. I mean, they could, yeah, they've only got 12 seconds. It's time to go for a rune here. And uh, it's nice that he was standing there as well, because then you can see where they are. Then mm -hmm. you know, oh, there's three heroes already down here. They're likely to commit to this. The Shadow Fiends at the bot rune. You know they're going to be there. It lets you make a good decision there. Because you never know if there's like that, the, the radiant uh, radiant side, like five men from this cliff area, and yeah. they just like all march down, and all of a sudden you're kind of caught going for that bounty rune. It's a, a dangerous thing indeed. So. Looks like our lanes are going to be pretty normal. We've got the Queen of Pain matched up against the SF. Both of them are going to be feeling a bit of support help. Of course, Puppy's going to have the advantage there because he will be able to jungle uh, and just occasionally rotate in. But his rotations are obviously going to be very key. We'll see whether or not he goes for the early smoke or anything like that. Meanwhile, we have uh, Secret. They're going to have... Misery playing as the offlane Slardar once again against MMY and Siler and R2K, who's already doing a battle with Pylai Die here in this top lane. And also has Eternal Envy backing up that support. It's pretty hard to zone a Batrider as a Shadow Shaman. Your movement speed is already really, really low. Aethershock is a great ability, but due to the low turn speed, he can't fight forever. So he's going to have to back off here for a bit. And his tangos are kind of low as well. Now, with the Chen pick, I like to see Chen's in games, but it, it really depends what creeps he gets. And with this first Wild Wing Ripper, he could very easily just go for the heavy farm. He also got no Mud Golems. Oh, yeah. He could that's basically great. just tornado both of these waves and hit a really fast level three, then transition to ganking. So playing Chen is a lot more about what creeps happen to spawn in the jungle and how do you react to those things at the same time lgd do seem in a very favorable position when you're just comparing their two offlaners misery has a lot more to contend with with just the wisp uh chaos knight that's a lot of uh kill potential between these two heroes while obviously we're seeing how rotk can just bully around this dual lane yeah, and RTK is hard's content. He's going to get a lot of levels out of this, especially because he knows there's only one support. Chen's not going to be here anytime soon. He could show up with maybe one creep right now, mm -hmm. but as long as he watches the scoreboard, he knows that Chen's not level three. There's only maximum one creep, and it's much more likely that she's getting some aggressive maneuvers going on there. Yeah, and even once we start getting a little bit later on into the laning phase and they start getting some high, uh, heavier levels and Shadow Shaman has both his disables and Doom has that higher level of Scorched Earth, he can always fall back to the jungle where supports are very likely to be stacking for both him and uh, of course maybe as the SF. That's going to be the big advantage of the Radiant side SF, of course. So even if Weeha can put a good amount of pressure uh, on maybe just doesn't seem like they're going to be able to ever really shut his farm down. R2K with a Firefly will be able to get over the cliffs, no problem. This harassment from Eternal Envy and Pylai Die isn't really going to result in much. Well, Puppy was the highest level in the game for a moment there. He got level 4 out of that stack. That's Jeez. the fastest I've ever seen a Chen hit 4. And now, because he hit level 3, it allows him to have two creeps at once instead. So he can always dedicate one creep mid to zoning a Shadow Fiend, and he can spend the other creep with himself farming. It's going to limit his farm a bit, but it's going to allow him to give a lot of space to uh, Weeha and allow him to get as much farm as he wants while preventing Shadow Fiend from accelerating. It's a big advantage getting lucky on those first stacks. Team's Misery is perhaps going to be joining the Chen in jungling, feeling that he doesn't want to be feeding away too many kills to the Chaos Knight Wisp. Um, and I would agree that the biggest thing for Secret is just to kind of keep this game calm and not let the Chaos Knight Wisp, who I feel are, are um, pretty momentum-based, do yeah. Don't give them those early kills. Don't let them get the uh, quick advantage in that fast level six on the Wisp. Especially because it's so hard to estimate how strong they are. Because you're mm -hmm. used to seeing, oh, it's a Chaos Knight. He's got a stun he can pull back. But when you throw a Wisp into that, everything he does is supercharged. And the movement speed and the extra slow. And he can give mana to Chaos Knight to fix that huge issue with Chaos Knight where his mana pool is really weak. Mm -hmm. It just really allows you 
to get kills that people don't normally expect to be killed by. So it's very safe that Misery goes back, does a little stacking, and we'll see if he can do anything. He's going to set up a kill top, actually. Yeah, they may be able to catch him as uh, ROTK actually stays away from that cliff area. Almost gets the stun, but ROTK plays around in that uh, that cliff water area, and he'll be A-OK. -okay. And Misery is just unfortunately not able to do much with this Boots first build. We may see him still try and rotate into middle, but uh, maybe he's going to have a full refill on his bottle now. Would have been a really nice kill if they did kill Bat there, but maybe Misery should have stayed bot. He could have contested the rune for sure, and that would have prevented Shadow Fiend from getting a double damage here, which frankly is going to mean we has no chance of killing Shadow Fiend in the next two or so minutes, yeah. unless he pops it instantly. Should be able to get all the last hits, though. Let's see, just goes for raises here. It's a little worried. It is nighttime, though, and there could be some creep wrap around here. Puppy now sitting at five. A fast six would give him that global heal, mean that anywhere, especially mid, that Weehaw would have an extra 200 HP, which is another way that he could definitely press an advantage mm -hmm. and just kill Shadow Fiend. Especially because SF just hit five and Weehaw's already six. So the mid main, the mid lane here is really where the action's going to happen. It's pretty insane how many uh, denies Weehaw got in the beginning of this game with the uh, help of Puppy's harassment and then just some of the natural advantage very early on of the Queen of Pain over the SF. Yeah. He was able to establish a pretty good level lead over maybe, but again, Radiant Side SF with stacks coming out from the wisp maybe will very rapidly shoot up over the queen of pain as clear through the the neutrals but puppy's gonna come in with this smoke he also has misery behind him if they could get a really successful gank maybe he's already down to low hp and he's gonna be caught by misery just burst it down real quickly and that's gonna be your first blood and my is also gonna be caught the sonic wave goes out they actually Siler in the process Siler's gonna be in some trouble tries to go for the kill on we hop but he's already started bottling up and Siler knows he just has to try and escape the situation but misery he's got his sprint ready to go plus the boots will be able to catch up to Siler eventually they're gonna commit for this kill even further Siler definitely Desperate for some help from the rest of LGD, but doesn't seem to be getting it. No one is around. He's going to pop the ultimate now to try and help give a little bit more distance. The Witch comes in, helps heal him up a little bit more, but there's just too much damage. The rest of Eternal Emblem oh, Pilot Eye coming in. Now DDC and MMY, they're going to be the next target. Team Secret, they're not stopping in time soon. A good race comes out for maybe threatening some of these heroes, but it's still MMY going to be dying to the Scorched Earth. And Eternal Envy wants DDC as well. The heal comes out for the Chen, keeping them perfectly healthy as they continue oh to sustain. God. Diving onto LGD. Zero to five, making zero to six is maybe being body blocked beautifully by Puppy. LGD, oh they've lost just God. six minutes in. Already six deaths to Team Secrets. The dive continues, man. That dive global heal just put attack. all the creeps up to full HP. The diving continued. Plenty to tank. None of these guys even have mana anymore because that was so long. Man, great great tr attempts at escaping by LGD, but Secret was just all over them. Mobility advantage, tons of creeps, tons of right clicks. I, it was very interesting to see EE and Pilot Edge shift from the top lane. As soon as they got there, I was like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. they, they gave up on farming because they're like, we're yeah. diving, guys. This <laughs> fight is not... And that's good that they did that because games where Wisp wins, it's because he uses that BS heal to give tons and tons of survivability to allies. And by them rotating over, yeah, they missed some last hits, but all of a sudden it's a 6-0 game and they have the top three net worths. LGD are going to be struggling to get back into this game. It's definitely going to be a lot more farm focus, but you know Team Secret after a big win like that are going to be... I mean, just look at Misery. He has 1,100 gold. This was a guy who wasn't in lane at all. And he was level 2 when that started. Yeah, yeah and now he's level. level 4, halfway to his blink dagger. Insane. The Queen of Pain uh, versus the SF matchup, obviously still very favorable for Quap after all that experience. Almost level 8 now. Two Shadow Fiend dust happened during that fight. That's That just blows my mind. He's only level 6 here. Normally we'd be seeing like a level 7, level 8 Shadow Fiend starting to accelerate really heavily. But with those deaths, man, and he lost souls twice. That's actually also super significant. His mm -hmm. damage is much lower right now, which reduces his farm ability, which reduces his ability to catch up. So LGD not looking great, especially with how passive their uh, supports are between the Dazzle and the Wisp. It just means, I think, a lot less opportunity. It's not like anything of the game really changes when these heroes uh, hit six, especially the Dazzle.
Once you have the relocate, yes, it gives you some more ganking opportunities, but what if Radiance middle are already too far behind to actually get some of these kills? What if Secret have decided to, you know, group up and you don't have the, the great openings that you usually see with a Chaos Knight Wisp game? This could turn very sour soon for LGD as uh, we now have a Gloves of Haze for Siler, so... Is this going to be uh, the early armlet, I presume, or yeah, I, is there any catch-up so. Midas possibility? Uh, I don't. I don't think this is the game. I, no. Midas has some value because they're against a Chen, and you can destroy his creeps and get gold from it. But yeah. I think it's much more likely. Chaos Knight is basically an early to mid-game hero. He's a lot better when he has some strength early because he's not a big farmer. He doesn't have AOE farming abilities. I think it's very likely that he will go for armlet. Look at that, Pylai Dai with the early level 6 is able to take the tier 1 tower in the top lane. Throws out the hacks to make sure that uh, the Batrider can't stop him. Meanwhile, the rest of Team Seeker are actually smoking up and rotating to the bottom lane. Trying to use Misery as fishy, fishy bait for Siler to jump on. Weeha, his smoke does get popped. He's going to be seen by MMY, who tethers over to Siler. Will be able to get away in time. A little bit of harass going on him. Force the bottles out now. Which, is mean, which means only him, he's going to get the regen rather than two heroes. So that's very good for him to do the harass. The tornado comes through as well. That's going to zone them out. This would do damage over time and a little bit of slow, which makes it so hard for them to actually defend the tower. They can't just stand there and wait for the perfect moment. They basically have to say, all right, you can have the tower. Go ahead. We're going to go do something else. <laughs> I mean, how are we going to fight into this? Like, once they take this tier one tower, Puppy's going to be super close to mech. If Team Secret just, like, start five banning, how do you fight into Chen, Heal, and mech? That's you, because you, you're lacking damage on LGD. Might find misery though. Oh, they're gonna get the doom out onto Siler. Fortunately, the long duration stun and then the help of the tether will help Siler keep ahead. But a oh, sonic wave actually lands on both of them. M and Y. They're just gonna continue to chase down Siler, ensuring this big kill on the carry. Maybe unable to get the deny. They chase down the Wiz as well with the help of misery. And now Eternal Envy. He's still looking at maybe with the help of Weeha blinking in. But fortunately, maybe does have a haste rune and oh. is actually gonna go for the kill on Weeha. Misses that secondary raise and that's gonna force him back. That definitely would have killed him if he landed that raise below the 220 HP here. Maybe still looking around, seeing, can I get a double raise on Weeha? Kill here would be so big, and it would, but he can't even defend here. If he if he approaches too far up, Envy's just going to run him down, especially with the very close Blink Dagger on Misery. And this push doesn't end, by the way. Pilot Eyes got wards in three seconds. Unless he saves it for Roche or Tier 1 Bot, I guess they could shift there as well. Mm. They have a lot of options right now. They are stupidly far ahead. They certainly are. Weeha is going to take advantage of that, going for the more aggressive Orchid build. Obviously, uh, a lot of potential out of this. Chaos Knight is unlikely to go for an early BKB. Same kind of goes for the SF, so... They're a good one. Awesome value. Oh, looks like LGD. They're finally going to get their first kill on the board. They find Pylai die sitting in the trees. It's a big one. Um, any experience that they can get is great. It puts IO to six now. So now the global issue comes in for Secret. If they see Chen off in the top lane without any creeps, boom, relocate, kill him. Very, very easy. So Puppy is going to have to adjust his playstyle a little bit. Shadow Shaman is going to have to adjust his playstyle a little bit. Makes things a lot harder. But even still, the five mana Secret is far better than anything LGD can put up right now, with the exception of that little pesky Batrider who does have his Blink Dagger. Yeah, this is finally when the Batrider comes online. This is part of the problem that Secret were able to dive so efficiently because the Chen had that early, you know, amazing start with the neutrals and then that rotation in the middle lane. There was nothing a Batrider could do in that scenario, right? Mm -hmm. It's just one of the downsides of running an offlaner like that. But now that he's got the blink, he can finally be a bigger factor and maybe find some openings for LGD to take advantage of these uh, rather over-farmed heroes. Safe thing being done, and they're going to smoke even though they are so far ahead. Uh, Doom will sit mid. He's very tanky at the moment. Plate mail is up, so most likely will be a Shiva's guard very rapidly to provide him uh, extra in pool, which he really needs. And as well, just the attack speed reduction is going to be massive this game, actually. Especially when your opponents don't have much farm. They might spot Cast Knight. Yeah, Pylai Dying runs right into him. Who gets the stun off first? That'll be Pi. The Hex, now they follow up with Misery, but Siler's going to be pretty healthy between him and the Dazzle. They're actually going to relocate him back, which leaves DDC out in the cold. He's just going to be chased down by the Chen Creeps. Will be eliminated. Killing spree already for Puppy at 12 minutes. It, it is not the time to take with trades. Oh, he does get stunned. Yeah, he's not going to make it out, so... They get a secondary kill, and that, I mean, the relocate felt a little off point. I, I didn't really see the immediacy needed for a relocate on Chaos Knight, who's getting the heals. 
Uh, I, I feel like there was gonna be backup shortly after, and they had no vision. You know, it's nighttime. Mm -hmm. All they see is the is the shadow shaman who turned and decided to fight. That's a scary thing when you're losing this bad. Cause yeah. the only way you get back in this game is if you start cutting your losses and trading evenly. You can only go for trades or free kills, and most of the time, a team like Secret is not gonna give you the free kills. They've got to only take the good ones. And Wisp said, "I'll save the cast knight," and he did. But he died as well, as well as the Dazzle, so not very good for them. Team Secret so far ahead, they're not sure who they want to take the Aegis. It's going to be Weeha in the end, which they did take Roshan so damn quickly. Between the combination of Serpent Wards as well as the Amplify damage. And Misery is ready to fish for kills here. Can they find the Shadow Fiend? Yeah, he's going to be first. able to catch RTK first. Starting off with oh. a Slytherin Crush. Okay, Centaur following that one up. And RTK is going to be spotted out. The amp damage, yeah, he's sitting on the side. But okay, <laughs> Eternal is just not messing around with RTK. Throws out the Doom. And why not? It's a guaranteed kill. And he may not have to use it at this rate in the next 100 seconds. The most applicable time to yell Doomed. Like, there's no salvation to ROTK <laughs> there. He's like, you have 100 HP. I don't think you're going to survive this one. OK, it is the catch up minus for Siler, and obviously a little okay. bit of help in eliminating well, Chen Creeps. I think it's OK now, don't you think? Like, before it was like, OK, you're kind of losing. Maybe get an armlet. Now it's like, you are really losing <laughs> by a Midas. Like, yeah. maybe delay this somehow. And the problem with Chaos Knight, though, is there's just not a lot of solutions. I think Chaos Knight hasn't picked almost ever recently. It's almost entirely Tiny Wisp. Almost mm -hmm. every single time. So I, I feel like the Midas is not the solution. The solution is not get 10 0 at the start of the game. Certainly, especially and, since Chaos Knight is a carry who doesn't naturally farm very well, like yeah. Tiny does. He's all about the kills. Misery literally just read the game well. He said, you're a Chaos Knight with the Wisp. The only way that you're going to get out of control. Oh, oh the relocate. relocate. But the, oh, the jump into the sun. They're going to stop the relocate. Bye-bye, Wisp. Chaos Knight. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, they do manage to take out the Doom. Looks like Chaos Knight's still going to die in the bottom lane. But the dive in on Puppy. LGD will be able to take him down. It looks like Puppy just turns around, gets whatever damage he can. R2K finishes him off. Misery hits the stun, but it's not in time. R2K is definitely overcommitted, though, and he will be going down. Nice TP out from maybe with a Shadow Grave at assistance. And DDC okay. will also get out. So that turns out all right, despite that huge jump in from Misery at the bottom left. Yeah, that's that's one of those trades that you need. Uh, trading three for two, not amazing for LGD, but that triples their kills, that man. That's <laughs> three to 14, that that percentage is a lot closer. Yeah, so. you got to look on the plus side. And even if it is a numbers advantage for a secret, it's still actually like golden experience. Either keeps it even or slight advantage in some yeah. ways to LGD. Imagine if the relocate didn't get canceled. Basically, two heroes down there. They try to initiate. They're a little bit too late. Then they have to catch up. Like they, they TP to lane. Queen of Pain's TP is on a 20 second cooldown. They could have done a 5v3 right there and they could have potentially wiped secret that would have been amazing for them either way they still even ish they've got to be happy with that considering the state of the game but mm -hmm. it's still not looking amazing team secret got to be careful and not giving up more opportunities like that to lgd so you're gonna jump in first reveal of the orchid is gonna catch ddc potentially by surprise and with the dd he may he still be able to nah, it's shallow grave yeah, he's going to come in for now. TDC okay. does, of course, have that Shallow Grave. He's going to TP out now. And uh, Misery just a bit short there on the Blink Dagger. Won't be able to hit the stun. Meanwhile, in the middle lane, Doom goes out, but it's not in time to stop the lasso. Puppy, oh, he doesn't actually make it over the cliff. And unfortunately, LGD, LGD in a bad position. His MMY almost gets bursted down immediately. Relocate up in five seconds. Misery misses the stun, but hits ROTK. Siler gets left behind. And MMY relocate out, back out, barely in time, but it's into the hands of Pylai Die, who just shocks him a new one. LGD, they lose. Lose three and maybe we'll just barely stay ahead of Team Secret. Once again, win the Ugh. fight and they'll take more objectives. Chaos Knight is still useless, man. It's it's out of control at this point because Doom is about to make his Shiva's guard, and once he has that, he's already got the recipe. Chaos Knight's all this. All right, Chaos Knight only has attack speed items, right? Well, he's got uh, what 55 attack speed. The Shiva's about to reduce his attack speed by 50. So essentially, Chaos Knight's gonna have nothing but HP and skill points. But that's not a place Maybe. you can be. Oh dear. He's really gunning for this one. He's got the weave taken down. He really wants to be able to get a good ultimate, but he's already losing DDC, and maybe it's just going to be forced all the way back. Meanwhile, RTK thought it was the time for initiation, but he's going to be lost as Sonic Wave cleans him up. Uh, Siler and the rest of LGD just start back. 
themselves away, but Pilot he just jumps on forward, almost trying to finish off the Four support. Second. He's going to be comboed down. Siler comes in. Weha will be able to take out the two supports. Siler now pops his ultimate, trying to catch up with the blink strike, trying uh, to get the kill okay. on Weha, but it's still just an Aegis. Siler, you don't want to come in for this one. Yeah, you got the kill, but you've lost your own life. Maybe he comes in. He's going to try one shot. Weha, he gets it. That'll be okay for LGD, but can they stop this push? It's still the Serpent Wards of the rest of Team Secret nailing that melee Rax and only maybe to be able to defend. It looks like Team Secret are going to take the early advantages. Maybe now going to be Target chains on comboed up and maybe just disappears and secret once again wipe LGD. They're not giving up yet, no GG, unless they're just gonna do a delayed one. But Secret is gonna get this range or this melee barracks at 18 minutes here. Dazzle's doing oh, aggressive. Melee Rax is so damn low, but the region is helping out. Now the sun comes out from misery on the two. Oh, be a heavy turns around, gets out the doom. Wish is trying to get that extra little bit of damage to send back on Slardar. Now Poppy commits for the melee racks that he gets it. Have me all you want, but I got the objective. LGD fail to defend the melee racks before the 20 minute marker. That was not bad. I would trade. They got a lot of kills there, honestly. They killed an mm -hmm. Aegis. They picked up Weeha. They got Puppy as well. Yeah, they lost to Melee Rax. That Melee Rax is going down no matter what, man. Like, it, it, what they salvaged was they salvaged a range barracks and they got some kills. That was a great defense considering where they're at. Considering only one of their heroes is higher in net worth than any of Secrets. They're sitting pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe surprisingly enough sitting third on the board with 9k is almost caught up to Doom and the Queen of Pain after that uh, one shot kill on Weeha. And he's gonna look for, well, another opportunity, but him by himself without the ultimate, there's yeah. no way he can kill the Queen of Pain. No lasso either, so yeah. very low chance of him getting that kill. But in 20 seconds, maybe he can make it work. But he's got no souls. He's not full. 24 is all. So low chance of him getting a one shot right now. And MMY says, well, I mean, my carry has nothing, but I'm going to protect him anyways, just in case he gets ganked. I'm happy to sacrifice myself. And Secret might go a little bit more passive here. But even with that said, they are so farmed right now. Does Eternal Envy just keep going? He he does like the old build that he used to do on the carry Doom back in Cloud9 and just go both Shivas and AC? Um, It's pretty good this game because mm -hmm. they are very physical based. Uh, Chaos Knight is mostly physical, Dazzle's physical, Shadow Fiend's a mix. I think it's a good idea. Relocate out, MMY saves just in time before Pilot Eye can get the, uh, the disable. Are they actually going to fight around this? L are teeping in. ROTK is going to make the initiation here. Looks like they're going to bring the Chaos Knight Wisp back to fold here. Eternal Envy going to be the first one targeted. The Wisp comes alone by himself, but oh, jumps on ROTK. The ultimate comes out from Maybe, but it's still not enough to eliminate Eternal Envy. The Minus Armor is oh, taking him down, heals. but he's got the heals. And now, oh, it's Doom on Maybe. He's never going to be able to get away from this. He's just trying to get some damage out, but even his death animation is not going to be enough to get a kill. Slardar, nice up there from Misery, but LGD have already called it. They know this game is over. They were fighting for scraps all game long after that Six man wipe in the middle lane. Oh, and it ends on a rampage for Weeha. They, you know, I think the reason they GG'd at that point, it was like they defended, it went pretty well, but then they had a perfect team fight essentially. Yeah. Great Requiem. They almost got a couple kills. And then there's that terrifying moment where Puppy presses his heel and everybody goes from the 